Hey. Well, it's Halloween season, and you know what that means. No, I, I dress like this every day. Kind of rude. No, that's right. It's time to visit a classic haunted spooky mansion. The kind that's right at Disney? No. The kind where you pay a bunch of teenagers to wear spirit Halloween costumes and jump out of you while you walk through a hallway in a warehouse after paying for an obscenely expensive $70 non-refundable ticket that was advertised to you as a boutique curated horror experience, but in the back of your head, you know a trip to Walmart at 3am is much more frightening and free. No, not that either. I'm talking about I Spy Spooky Mansion for PC, aka one of the greatest edutainment games ever made. Is that a lofty claim? Not really. I'm talking about edutainment games here. It's not exactly the most competitive field, but in my mind, this 1999 title stands amongst the greats, shoulder to shoulder with Pajama Sam, Math Blasters, and Ugly Sleepover, I'm Ready for Kindergarten. Anyway, let's talk about I Spy. If you don't remember, let me jog your memory. I Spy was an incredibly successful series of books that started in the 90s, published by Scholastic, Although the target audience was probably children, the books became an incredible worldwide sensation loved and adored by many, regardless of age. So this gentleman right here, Walter Wick, takes these incredible photos of these insanely detailed scenes that he creates with household objects, or just like random toys and knickknacks, or more ambitious stuff like entire miniature sets. Then this woman, Jean Marzolo, writes these rhymes that tells us stuff to find in the photos. Not to worry, I've got the visual aid right here. Let's take a look at how it works. Hold on though, I, I gotta stand up and zoom in the camera. This is a one man operation here. So like I said, these books are filled cover to cover with these incredible intricate photos that are just super fun to look at. If you've ever enjoyed the Where's Waldo series, that's a good analog to these, except in Where's Waldo, you're always looking for Waldo, but in I Spy, it's gonna vary from page to page. Now, the cool thing about these that really elevates the material for me is these are photos, not illustrations. Meaning these scenes existed in real life, which just blows me away. Anyway, let's look at a rhyme right now and try it out. I spy a clothespin, a short sad poem. A magnet, a mouse, a little palindrome. I had to, I had to put a little French on that to make it rhyme. Don't worry, Gene, I got you. Now, we gotta examine the picture to find that stuff. No oh, man, okay, wait. I think I'm, I'm gonna have to get a scan of this online. I don't think the camera's gonna pick this picture up well enough to see the detail. Uh, it's got some glare. Um, All right, that scan was harder to find than I thought it would be. Okay, so let's do this. Looking for a clothespin. All right, so over here on the left side of the screen, we can see that, that's not too bad. Short, sad, poem. Ah, boo-hoo, I think that counts as a poem to me. A magnet, okay, not too bad, sitting on top of this tin right here. A mouse. All right, so the scan's pretty dark, but believe it or not, I have the book in front of me and it is right here and a little palindrome. Now this one took me a minute, but look over here. This bottle of tonic, lion oil, a palindrome. See, not too bad. Okay, I think we've covered enough of the book because the real star of the show here is the game. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so right off the bat, we run into our first issue. These games don't really have a modern PC port, so we're gonna have to use a virtual machine, and I'm actually pretty inexperienced with this. And to be honest with you, it was harder than I thought it was gonna be. But we're rewarded with eh, at least a semi-functional version. However, there are some quirks. Believe it or not, this game doesn't really run that well on my PC, and what I have to do is move the mouse around if I don't, the game bizarrely runs at like half speed. So if during the course of these clips, you see me moving my mouse around like a weirdo, that is the reason. Welcome to the game of Spooky I Spy. Type in your name, then click go to try. So the game will ask for our name and believe it or not, it's actually important because our name will feature in some of these puzzles, which is a neat trick. Your 
in for a scare. <laughs> You've entered the house. Now the fun can begin. Too bad you can't get out the way you came in. <laughs> There's another way out. Here is a clue. Behind the picture frame is a puzzle for you. All right, so after that beautifully animated intro sequence, here's the shakedown. This skeleton, which is in fact the narrator of this game, has trapped us in this house. Now he holds the key to our escape, but he's making us solve a puzzle in what can only be described as a sadistic saw game, but for children. So, as we become acquainted with the house, we find this game sort of plays like a point-and-click adventure game. However, there's a lot of little details that make it nice. When you hover over interactable objects, there's an animation that plays that just feels so, so immersive. I just love the effort they put into these things. Okay, well, we might as well start with the worst part of this entire game. It's a stupid little minigame where you have to associate these two boxes together based on some common factor. It's more educational than fun. It can wrinkle your brain, sure, but it's just not really what I want from Spooky Mansion. Nevertheless, what's going on here is we have to collect a piece of the map to get out of the house from every puzzle, and this counts as a puzzle, so we gotta do it. Okay, so let's do our first real I Spy puzzle. It's a spooky graveyard outside of a spooky window. And how it works, the skeleton is going to read us the rhyme. Very well because in this sick, twisted game he's playing, he makes the rules and he gives the prizes, which is, of course, a piece of the map to lead to our escape. I spy two matches, a candle flame, a bone, three ducks, an F in a frame, a trunk, an I, a paperclip, a dangling spider, and an old clipper ship. So you'll notice when we find items and click on them, they'll do a nice little dance. Sometimes a unique animation, sometimes just shaking around, but it'll also play a variety of fun Halloween spooky jingles. Okay, so now that we understand the basics of how I Spy works, let's take a tour of the entire mansion. So we've got a creepy grandfather clock where most of the puzzle actually appears to be carved out of wood. I wonder how this was made. Then we've got the classic gross-out horror dinner scene. Pretty brutal looking. And perhaps an even grosser, more disgusting looking kitchen. But keep this place in mind because we'll be back here later. One thing that's interesting to note is this game actually doesn't have a ton of music, but it does have some ambiance going on. To be honest, it's kind of traditional to have some spooky Halloween music, so it is an element of this game that seems sort of lacking. Here's where the skeleton keeps all the keys to the cages in his basement, presumably. And hey, look, that's my name. Your name. I told you we'd see that. This should look familiar, but again, we'll be back here later, so keep it in mind. All right, so as we continue exploring the mansion, it's time to head upstairs. And again, let's just enjoy the mood lighting here. The ambience is incredible, and I love the interactions of the environment. At some point when I was young, I would play some very similar horror flash games that were definitely taking a page or two from I Spy Spooky Mansion. Just look at the interactivity here. Here's one of my favorite puzzles in the game, straight out of Silence of the Lambs, where you have to use a magnifying glass to look at tiny little details on these moths, like you're some sort of Lepidopterist at work. By the way, that's the Doom Prophet educational segment. Lepidopterist is someone who studies moths or butterflies, so, uh, the more you know. Then, we've got the classic spooky attic, which we explore armed with only a flashlight, so your mouse pointer is the only area you can see. Honestly, this might have been over the line as a kid into the too scary territory. Remember, this is made for six to ten year olds, reportedly. And indeed, this game hits pretty much all the classic spooky house themes. You get a bathroom that looks like something out of The Shining. You've got this extremely haunted collection of dolls. I'm telling you, you could not pay me to hang out with these dolls. This is one million haunted. A saddle. 
crossed legs. But the game does try to keep it light, always playing those cute little jingles when you find something, and the skeleton actually is really friendly and rooting for you the whole time despite being your captor. So I guess we're learning about Stockholm Syndrome as well. We've also got this random box of memorabilia that's probably the least scary puzzle in the game. Alright, anyway, we have solved all of the skeleton's puzzles, meaning we have all the pieces needed for us to escape. So let's solve this little pictograph puzzle. This is yet another thing helping us grow our child brains. And once we solve it, it tells us there's a secret room in the house which we can reveal with the Scooby-Doo classic book on the shelf that's actually a lever to open a bookcase door revealing the mastermind room. Yes! You read my message, I presume? And now you're in my secret room. Ready to get back outside? Go through my window. Open wide. Then, the skeleton gives us his villain speech and is just like, Jump out the window if you want to leave so bad, idiot. You've escaped my house. Well done. But this game has just begun. If you dare to come back in, a new adventure will begin. But it's not over, because then he invites us back in for a new game. That's right, New Game Plus. I Spy Spooky Mansion is the Dark Souls of educational games. But wait! I think this is a good time to interject and just call attention to how much effort was put into this game. This could have just been some PNG scans of the book with some click detection setup, so when you click on an object, it gets highlighted. But they went so much harder. There's animations for virtually everything you click on. There's so much attention to detail even put into the transition screens in the mansion that's not even a puzzle. There's fun little musical jingles that play when you find stuff. They just went hard. Because this was a labor of love. So much so, in fact, that this is actually a remaster slash remake. That's right. I neglected to mention this earlier, but this is actually the 2004 re-release where they went back and fixed stuff they weren't happy with and added a few puzzles and scenarios. Here are some of the difference in additions that were made. Alright, so we're just going to point out a few of the most major differences, starting with the first puzzle we looked at, the spooky window. They're just kind of making it a little bit better, a little bit spookier, a little bit more atmospheric, adding the graveyard in the background. These kinds of details, though, they really tell me that these people cared about the product they made. Then we have the kitchen, which is basically just the same thing, making it a little bit gooder. This dedication to the craft is admirable. Then we have the uh, ghost machine room. The before is clearly more functional, which is kind of a spoiler, but the revamp version turns it into a puzzle of its own. And finally, we have the biggest change, which is the secret skeleton mastermind room. In the first game, it's barely anything at all, but in the second game, it becomes its own puzzle room for your New Game Plus runs. Speaking of which, it's time to get back to that. Alright, so the way this new game plus cycle works is you're going to get a brand new set of riddles and find brand new things in all the puzzles. Basically, all of the puzzles are so crammed full of details that they have three or four riddles ready to go before you've found every object. So this is a concept that gets applied to all of the I Spy games that I've played. And indeed, even the books, if you'll check the back, sometimes they have harder new game plus riddles. All the puzzles will stay the same, you're just looking for new objects. However, we do get the addition of the Mastermind Room to play in. So, this time, instead of the skeleton having a map for you, he wants to make a potion. So you're going to have to go around the house and track down some ingredients. Which means, of course, solving all the puzzles again. But this time, you have an additional task. You'll have to get some ingredients, and they're not even always in the puzzles, they can be in the transition rooms as well. Alright, so after you do all the skeletons grocery shopping, you're actually going to make a foul concoction that's going to shrink you down to the size of a mouse and treat you to probably my favorite part of the entire game. A delightful little animation where you escape.
Of course, it brings you only back to where you began. And the skeleton invites you in for the third and final New Game Plus cycle. You dare to come back in? There's still something you've never seen. The plans to fix my ghost machine. The ghost machine. New Game Plus Plus. So, hey, Doom. Just how is this an educational game anyway? What are we learning? I'm not any better at math after this. Was this worth anything at all? Well, my friend, not all learning is so concrete. The things we learn in I Spy are more abstract. Let's take a look at the box. For kids, 6 to 10, you'll learn language arts, thinking skills, problem solving, and creativity. And the updated version just says brain building games for kids. But I think it's legitimate. Because think about it. First, we'll hear or read a rhyme, then we'll parse that information to figure out what it could mean. Because it's not always completely straightforward. Then we gotta use our eyeballs, and we also have to use our creativity, because the game might tell us to find a bat, but is that a baseball bat or the spooky flying mammal variety? I think it's legit. I love I Spy even as an adult. And hey, maybe if you're a kid, you'd learn something. But either way, it's still fun. Anyway, it's time for New Game Plus Plus. You know this door is tightly sealed. A new way out must be revealed. The plans you need, you'll find downstairs. By my ghost machine that needs repairs. Okay, so you get the gist of it by now. It turns out this guy's got a machine that's broken. And guess what? To get the parts, we gotta solve all the puzzles again. One more once! Now, the goal of this machine is actually to make a ghost. I personally only know of one way to make a ghost. Murder. But, turns out the skeleton is actually using a much more profane and forbidden method. Ghost science. So, it turns out the ingredients to make a ghost are pretty weird, and it's just like the last time where we're gonna have to go all around the house finding ingredients to make six different ghosts. Critter. Once we That's do, we're gonna make one to final ghost, free? an amalgamation of all the previous ones. We'll go snatch them for where they're hiding in the house and combine them together. To and then, the skeleton climbs in like a psycho creating an unholy legion of spirits which takes us out of the chimney. and gives us the coveted, rare, I Spy Spooky Mansion clear screen. Through a window, mouse hole, and chimney you've gone. This spooky night is ending, it's almost dawn. The time has come to say goodbye. You've mastered this game of spooky I Spy. So, that was I Spy Spooky Mansion, undeniably my favorite of the I Spy books and games. That's right, I'm the basic- I'm drinking pumpkin spice right now, and I've got a tattoo of Jack Skellington on my back, and he's getting wider and wider, because I won't stop hitting lats at the gym. Okay, none of that's true, but it is my favorite, because it's still fun, it's still charming, it's so clear they put tons of passion into this game, and really, I just wanted an excuse to play it as an adult. And to be honest, I want a full re-release of this game. Now, there are other ways to play this, like I think there's a Wii version, but I want it on PC at full speed. I don't want to mess around with a virtual machine. 
Anyway, that's really all I got. I hope you enjoyed this nostalgic look at iSpy. And if you're interested in the other iSpy games, don't worry, because I've got another video about the rest coming your way. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in some more Spooky Month vids shortly, too. Anyway, I'm the Dude Prophet, and don't forget, the end is nigh. So take it easy. And if it's easy, take it twice.